Thank okay. you so much for yeah. agreeing to do this. Thank you. <laughs> Everything is connected. Everything. I mean, that's one of our, our problem that we don't understand the connection of things. Um, things are connected. Um, yes, uh, dance is a storytelling. Theater is a storytelling. Storytelling actually is everything, art in general, because I always say there is no art without story. And, and artists may not know exactly the story they are illustrating in their art, but when the, the piece come out all the time, someone else will find a story in, in the piece of art. And um, one of the thing is that most importantly is to understand that. The word understand is very simple thing, but can solve the world problem. And that's why in um, story, my, I tell stories, not just because of the fun of telling stories, but to help people understand concepts. Uh, a lot of times, especially in the West, from my native place, people are fixated on truth, lie, and reality, and there are so many words that people use. This is the reality, this is the truth, this is a lie. But all I need is as simple as understand concepts, whether this is about a human being, or it's about a story, a storyline, or it's about a tree or nature in general. You will not resonate yourself with anything that you don't understand. So that word understanding is the most powerful word, not just word, it should also be part of our everyday uh, life uh, style. Trying to starve to understand. And as you know, there is uh, things going on in the United States right now, not just in the United States, but the, the happening in the United States was sort of like blurred up this whole uh, you know black situation black life matter across the world uh, not only in Europe also but in Africa you know politically people are struggling you know and plus this pandemic and so forth uh, what but we hear a lot of stories and we don't really realize that having to hear both sides constantly can actually itself create a mental illness in people People can actually, um, we are just like a big, big moving germ, right? And, and, and having to have all these negative things ev constantly, constantly really uh, takes its toll on human body, especially those who have a lighter way of taking things can have mental effect on them. So we, um, storytelling is uh, it's important, but I always stick to understanding what something work. People always ask me, and they say, okay, what do you think about what's going on right now in the United States? And I said, well, in my native country, they always say that if you want, if one want to know your own culture so well, you have to ask a foreigner, somebody who had never been a part of it from the beginning. Because living in the United States, uh, in a foreign language, in a foreign culture, observation, and trying to understand things is my main goal. So therefore, I am so glad someone finally came to me and said, what do you think? There's so many gaps in history that we don't know. If you uh, we all know the history of the United States, how people got here, and we all know the history of Native people. But the, the European descent that came to this country, have they come with the kind of history they chose, or there is this real history that, that's supposed to be exposed is exposed? If it is so, there is dark spots. And so therefore, or people choose, this is very, very Western, they choose to ignore what they don't like or what they feel they should ignore. But things don't go away. 
we are connected to not only our own spirit, but the spirit of the nature itself. Our behaviors, and both good and, and bad, are actually, you know, clouds that are always hanging around our, our, our head. And sometimes they serve as good, they serve as good, sometimes they don't serve as good. So I think it's so important that we actually learn to separate what we call learning from database and the learning and, and the knowledge we should gain from each other and nature. I think for me, human being is the most, it's the greatest teacher, not just human being, life, must, any moving creature with body were the greatest teacher that God, if there's one, had created. Okay? So therefore, uh, my happiness is so connected to yours, you will not believe it. In every storytelling scene, especially my storytelling uh, program called What is Standing on Your Soul, is a, a system to actually see other people as your own reflection. Because me by myself, I am a confused mass. I will never be able to figure myself out. But the minute I interact with other humans, and how they feel about things and how they feel even telling stories about their life you know uh, i find so many spots that re resign with me and i find so many uh answer of my own question about myself that i didn't know before so i think even in our education system which i've been doing this all over the world i've been telling people these our education system will thrive if we actually help our youngsters understand what it's like to be us. It is not through math, it's not through writing, it's not through anything, but constantly bring guest artists that will come and talk about who they are and allow these kids to have ideas how to express themselves to back to those people who they are. This is so important. This, there is no, at this point, you, it's part of, for me, it should be part of education because art has been thrown aside from, uh, from the education system. And we can see that an educated man is not necessarily a conscious man. It's not necessarily a man with great vision. It's not necessarily a kind man. But, however, an educated person should have all this element into uh, uh, him or herself. And why we don't have them? Because we do not consider anything else as education except what we have it, we have stored what we it's there in the database whether it's a math whether it's you know right so basically what we're teaching in school right now that is basically it and the society had focused on that that if you don't have a high degree on that then you're not an educated person and this affect humanity as whole uh, not just in the United States but across the world and the tiny slight window still exists to reach out for those areas to bring them into our human life back again and it's done through art and that's why for me it is so important that art remains in education system it is so important that our kids get to use their right brains as much as their left brains. And it's important, but we're not allowing it most of the time. Our creative side is here, and this is the academic side. So therefore, would you like to balance them, or would you like to just limp on one side? So we don't see a lumpy 
person, uh, the lumpy brains, but in reality, many of us are walking in the style of, of STEM. So that's why I really appreciate art. And I think like when you ask me at the beginning, is everything is connected. I didn't need to go through all these, but indeed everything is connected. And if I want to, like we always say, we do pretty words, pretty words. There are a lot of pretty words in the United States. I've heard it for 35 years, you know? And if you want to be kind, be kind to someone else. If you want to do this, if you want respect, be, be respectful to yourself. All these are very pretty and decent, reasonable saying. But, but, but is, anyone, uh, is anyone acting up on and people also need to realize uh, um, racism, for example, which we, the issue is about that right now, racism in the United States. Mm -hmm. And it is a profound uh, thing because a lot of time, what we don't realize that it's not in the color of skin. It is, it is actually in people's mind. You know, and I don't blame them because sometimes it's a lack of understanding. And uh, we, in your language, you will say, oh, they just need to be educated. But how do you educate somebody on something that doesn't understand in the first place? It, it's a very complicated situation. So, um, for example, all of these police issues that are happening, it doesn't have to be to this extreme for people to come out. I've been here for 30 years. I know what is going on here. So if somebody is beaten today and suddenly the person die, and that's what's visual. But if people are being slowly killed, not by weapon, but by words and action, uh, no one sees it. And this is the hidden, dark thing in the society that people don't understand. I myself, I'm honest with people. Sometimes when people do things and I see the pattern is being repeated over and over, I tell them directly, I consider this as racist. Is there anything we can do about this? This is not calling the police. This is not calling my neighbor. This is not, I tell them directly. And most likely, there is a discussion that comes up about it. But some people don't even want to talk about it. But still, it's a lack of understanding. Because if you understand the other person, you understand humanity, you understand where people come from, you understand family, you understand how we all, the kind of way we all want to represent ourselves outside our families, our communities, our countries. That consciousness is in everyone's heart. But the practice, it's another story. Uh, Kofalin Cultural Center is actually exactly on the same line of thought you asked earlier. The only reason I created that is that because uh, you know, when I was a younger person, I, you know, it was a, our family tradition. We went to our grandparents, and I was four years old. And during that time, I was also the youngest. So therefore, my grandmother called me her little husband. So I stayed next to her uh, constantly as my older siblings and cousins go to the farm and tend goats and sheep in the uh, countryside as well. So, uh, but being around my grandmother, I think I, ha I have a book about this called Gift from Childhood. So, so if you read that, you'll see a lot of this story. It was kind of, it was quite a relationship between us, you know? And, but, you know, for the love of grandmother and grandson, we become beautiful friends. And when I was seven years old, I, I went everywhere with my grandmother. When I was seven years old, I almost started learning everything about my grandmother because um, one thing is that 
uh, twice a week our compound will be filled with uh, mothers with sick babies asking uh, wisdom from my grandmother and she was an herbalist so she was like the doctor for all of this I believe the power of herb after spending 17 years with my grandmother so therefore um, um, this time I become also an herbal boy like my grandmother now trusts me I know every root every leaves every barks that she needs for different Ill childhood illnesses I used to be traveling and that was great for her because she that was the moment that she can you know assist more and more parent and that experience itself was amazing to me I spent so 17 years doing this and then after 17 years I become a shepherd boy and tending my goats and I had that's another responsibility you know you take your goats and sheep in the countryside and spend the day lunch is well fruits and stuff and um, when the goats and babies give birth you are the only person responsible and take care of if you lose no goat you get you gain the trust of your adult that was my life for a long time and during all this time I we've always asked my grandmother uh, we want to go to school because we see in the village even in the village children go to school but we were not allowed to go to school my grandmother will always say you will go to school only when you're educated children should not go to school unless they're educated ah well I didn't understand back those days I still didn't understand through my formal education in French school in Bamako all the way up but now as the 58 years old man I understand what my grandmother was talking about because I am seeing that clearly on people that we may be database educated but we're really not educated on humanity which she thinks you don't find anywhere except your social lifestyle it starts from the family and the child behavior outside is reflected in the family where I come from and so therefore it is so important that adults stay with them for the longest time and share as many stories as they can and also teach them about where they come from and the story of their own families so I think today in my adult life I treasure that more than my formal education in school it's because it is the reason today I am an artist it is the reason today the vision I have and it's it I, I, I tore other people and the nature you know I remember time and time saying you know leave at once with your surrounding that's that's you're at peace you, you don't need this you don't need this but the world become a big consumer thing we need so much more than we need we we, we can use and you see it clearly what grandma was talking about uh, the more educated we are it seems like the dumber we get because we forget this other side we just think this is it everything is open the book and learn F open the book and learn but I like to run, uh, learn from the origin you're standing here you're the most important person right now and I see myself whether you have done behavior or good bad behavior see we see that it's my own reflection I learn from them I, I can tell what you do is good or not then I, I I judge myself through that you know and then I put myself on the clean rail of life but as long as we lose that interconnection as long as we lose that the oneness with even objects, trees, mountain, everything in the nature, then we are losing a big part of ourselves. And the village people, they generally say today's humanity is a broken story half lost. And that is where it comes from. Because we refuse to understand that we're not the boss. We are just part of living things and the importance of, of that the importance of that 
that is that um, is that we have to because we will not we're just losing that ground we're losing it as as years goes by you know uh, so I think uh, we should turn around and see our tails and do more social interaction um, I do tea here for 35 years I, I've, I've told you this before I did I do Malian style tea here for 35 years and and um, I have gathered a huge crowd but I uh, what I notice if if it was at some point in life that if I was born here I, I would have stopped it because I know people take my kindness suspicious I go out of my way and do things and not only I make tea I make ginger drink I teach I, I teach people all these things that I used to do with my grandmother but some people get suspicious when per, a person is kind, they become suspicious because generally it's not like that. But uh, it's hard to change. I tried. I tried to say, okay, this is how everybody is. Maybe I should actually tone my things up, but it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Maybe it's I, other people that need to change. Uh, well, uh, that's hard because r remember you. Uh, they tried to create a remote control on that, it didn't work. So, so I always tell people to focus on themselves. You can never change the other person. However, there is a method of changing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, people can change through uh, kindness, sharing stories. And I never remember someone telling me, stop that when I was growing up. It was all through stories. To, it, it's, it, they stimulate your mind to a point without arguing you agree and storytelling is also all about that tell you something and you can walk away pondering about what this story is about and find your own answer and sometimes it, proverb, proverbs and metaphors are like that constantly it is to force people to think instead of arguing with people but even those proverbs that were a big part of African traditional education you gotta be careful telling proverb to people here because they interpret it their own way and suddenly it become a fuse <laughs> so so it's only selected proverbs that 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 people say uh, they're one of the good like what when they say it takes a village it takes a village in fact that that proverb is so uh, popular that I started actually, it just become a saying. It, it's no longer, you know, you, uh, it's no longer working for its original stand because everybody's saying. It. It's sort of like when you tell someone that speak French and they would sing Frere Jacques. <laughs> well, okay, skill is one thing. Art skill is one thing. It's like when I tell you about my tea time. Tea time is definitely a reason to bring people so they can learn from each other. And that's the, the only reason. So we can share stories, we can share, we can get to know who we are as human. So art skill is sort of the same. You have to come with a subject, you have to come with a platform that people will agree up on. But the social network about art, it's its own story. There's a lot of benefits of coming together to share uh, st uh, art, to be to work together in art. There is this uh, social network. People really are generally kind and excited and to be with each other. But at the same time, within all these, people learn little things from each other. And, and beside, we get to actually understand, especially my part, we get to understand where I come from also. Because uh, uh, it, it shows that, you know, a wide world can fit in one room. We can all get along. So, so I really love 
my sharing art, especially the mud cloth and all these uh, public projects that I bring young people into and also create uh, school uh, painting projects. Uh, it's not all about just because I'm an artist. There's a lot of artists you can take, they can do those things. But I see something different, something special in those things. It is to always help children to understand that we get to learn about ourselves. You know, um, a lot of times people see kids grabby and stuff. We say, oh, it must be hungry and stuff. But stories, I notice my little conversation with them absolutely change the moment. And um, I, it's just because I've been doing that, I think, for great uh, art teachers that invite me in, my, in their class and allowed me to interact like that and, and tell stories and you know a lot of time it works. Coming together and share uh, ideas and uh, also hold conversation with each other is the uh, meaning of peace. That's the meaning of peace. A lot of people think peace means being calm, but if you calm you're not learning anything, yet you're not at peace. And that's the problem that we have. When you don't learn, you don't understand. And all learning is not the classroom learning. A lot of, there's more, in fact, there's probably 70% outside the classroom that we need to master also in order to live a full human life. I was fortunate enough to see that in action a couple times. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so yeah. lucky. Yeah. Uh, I was named after my uh, maternal grandfather. His name was not Baba. It's everybody call him Baba. My my father, my uncles, everyone. And uh, then when I was born, I was supposed to be named after him. So they named me after him. As you see, my name is Baba now because he was the, uh, but he was a visionary man, very, very powerful uh, in his mind, and um, also different than my grandmother, but was sort of like a visionary person that helped people um, with their problems. So therefore they began calling him, uh, because he lived in the Sunenke region of Mali, so they called him Baba Wage. Baba Wage means the man I trust. So of course, with my father's last name, Jakite, meanings the owner of sheep. And so I, I title all, all those three names. So, I love that. I yeah. wanted to make sure that you shared that. Yeah. Um, but, but that name thing that you're, you just mentioned, it's a very powerful thing, you know, because our names is a part of our identity, of, co mm -hmm. of course because it's in our mind, it's paced to us, and we answer it. But uh, it is merely the end of identity we need to have. Our biggest problem with one another, one of our biggest problems is we do not identify ourselves with other people. And this is not a choice, because a lot of time, people that you don't like, or things that you don't like, you are more part of them than pe things and people you like. And, uh, but that all comes in this line of understanding. People don't try to discover things. They don't try to learn, you know. Um, so we need to really have a lot of identity. The more identity you have, the more you get along with the Y world. But if you identify yourself with certain class of people or certain class of trees or flowers and, and the others are nothing to you, then you're never gonna be kind to those others. I try to help people understand that our entire life is, is a sick of identity. If, if that sick of identity is a rose to you, just make sure you get as many rose perils you can, you know, but literally I don't mean plants, because plants and nature get along. Who doesn't get along? 
human beings, even animals get along somehow, you know, but we have a hard time identifying with one another because what it is, uh, it's not the color, it's in our mind. It's in our mind. The very discriminatory behavior, the very pushy personality, uh, it's not all physical. A lot of time, there are things that people say, is the way people see, is their vision, is terrible. At some point, it will create a sinkhole, which we are, we are seeing some of that right now. Not good. So we need to identify with each other as much as possible. If he means uh, you don't like 99% of my personality, stick with one you like and make that our link of connection. Ultimately, none of us, none of us are perfect. All we do in life is grow into each other. I think our personal relationships are a key to that. I think if we don't have so much in common, let's stick to what we have in common and become at once up on that. And slowly, it grows. But if you don't plant that seed, nothing will grow. It is very difficult. We encourage everybody to create, to be a little symbol of change. And I'm very sure um, a lot of people think that I have, but I really wanted to do bigger. Um, again, it comes down to you know, my hope was that I, I have a, a cultural center in Mali where I try to help sustain the tradition of any, all, of, all of these things that I'm telling you and also promote Western education to uh, Africans, uh, kids that come from poor families that parents cannot afford education. And storytelling and art is a big part of that. Well, the reason that I wanted to do that here in the United States that was my goal. I wanted to do that. I wanted to have a place called the Cultural Center that I can involve so many children in it. And it's one thing that really, there's other form of storytelling centers, dance and stuff and theater and so forth that exist, right? But I wanted to do something like my style to help youngsters and mentally, you know, disturb young people, understand that they have something, they have a story, they have a voice, they can be instructor in the same society that they are a part of. But, oh, it is so hard. I've been, I, I've been looking, I mean, as an artist, I cannot sell anything enough to create such a thing. And I try to bring the uh, cultural center idea here. I, I do teach here and there uh, what's standing on your soul. But wouldn't it be nice to have a center where I can work? I know there's great artists here that understand things that I'm talking about, that we can together create this cultural thing that will actually help youngsters from five years old to high school. That's all we need. But it didn't work out. However, I am hoping that, you know, the many schools that I traveled across country, United States, from Washington, D.C., all the way, you know, across Africa. I hope people, young people are hearing me. They're hearing me because I hear that in international schools in Africa, that young German kid they talk to me and say wow you know do we have to bring someone from the United States to teach us African culture and it doesn't surprise me because a lot of people are not retaining this traditional way of human life anymore it's all database so I'm hoping that uh, I will teach in so many places that someone will have absorbed a lot from me hoping 
it will help in the future. But in the future, we have to also, for the better future, we have to really highlight this word, understanding. People don't understand each other. They don't understand nature. They don't understand anything except what is, for example, if you tell a young person to give the, uh, the uh, description of witness, they will just go to the dictionary. So their father also just knew it from the dictionary base. And their grandfather had. So is there something that was not there in the database thing that we can actually be creative a little bit of and making children understand what witnessing itself mean? Does he have a variety of different angles and so forth? And those, those are much, even if those are in the dictionary, those kind of conversation sharing amongst people is so much more valid than just reading one. I'm not discarding dictionary. It can be a representative of somebody, but I think holding conversation in the classroom with children about subjects even if it is art, what art means, you know? There's so many different ways. But um, when I was growing up, art, all we know is those who work with their hand. So in that case, who is not artist? Everybody works with their hand. Anyway, I hope um, that together we, uh, we will help children to build our future. What we teach them today is is our own good end okay i know people especially in the west they don't like that but you know uh living life is part of death death is part of living life and our bodies when we get we have a cut in our finger something has to die in order for for it to heal so our entire life is like that that's the process of life so we can't worry about the beginning and the end at, while you're living in the center you just gotta leave and uh, uh, and knowing consciously that you're also the, the whole process of your life you're handing a baton you better you better give a baton that has a lot of identity in it to the next person otherwise it's gonna be where we are again so thank you thank you so much yeah